This is Lake Borry, 35 kilometers from the heart of Melbourne. It's a declared sanctuary for 200 different species of birds, living in an environment of unspoiled natural countryside. But it's something else too. It's the centre of one of the world's most progressive land sewage purification schemes. The Werribee Farm of the Melbourne and Metropolitan Board of Works. restless, ever-moving, ever-growing city. Its people, in the simple processes of living, pour over 600,000 tonnes of sewage a day into the spider-like underground network of Melbourne's sewerage system. And the demands by an ever-increasing population for more products and better services to match the sophistication of their way of life generate more waste from industry. Urban sewage destined for treatment at Werribee flows to the Brooklyn pumping station. Sewage from city and metropolitan areas is gravitated to 50 metres below this skillfully engineered pumping station. Every day an average 570 megalitres, sometimes double in wet weather, is screened of solid materials which could damage pumping equipment and lifted to the outfall sewer for transit to the Werribee farm. All equipment is maintained in impeccable order and operated under the watchful eyes of control room supervisors. Sewage comprising over 99% water enters the farm in an open intake channel at the end of the covered outfall sewer. The main control gates on the outfall sewer regulate the sewage into a web of distribution channels. Melbourne and Metropolitan Board of Works Werribee Farm covers over 10,800 hectares off the Prince's Highway between Melbourne and Geelong. It's crisscrossed by 850 kilometres of channels and 230 kilometres of access roads, which service the sewage purification and animal grazing areas. three methods of treating sewage at the Werribee farm, all using natural processes to remove organic matter from effluent. One of the methods, lagooning or ponding, is designed to cater for peak daily flows and excesses caused by wet weather. Effluent flows out of each lagoon through these square drain openings. Sewage flows progressively via connecting pipes through a series of 8 to 12 lagoons, each of 4 to 8 hectares in area and a metre in depth, except the first, which is 2 metres deep, to accumulate the major proportion of sludge. During 60 to 70 days, suspended matter settles out and biochemical processes remove pollution.
1,400 hectares of the Werribee farm are devoted to the lagooning process. Slowly, pond by pond, the effluent is purified and released into the sea, under constant quality surveillance. Similarly, another boundary, the Werribee River, is regularly checked to ensure there is no seepage from the farm. The Melbourne and Metropolitan Board of Works is proud that of all the rivers flowing into Port Phillip Bay, the Werribee River is the cleanest. The standard required for outflow from the Werribee farm is also recommended in Great Britain for effluents discharged into inland rivers frequently used further downstream for town water supplies. Chemical analyses and scientific supervision control every aspect of the outwardly simple purification procedures. Melbourne expands to house and service its growing population, so too must the Werribee farm develop to process the increasing volume of waste water. It's a constant task, preparing new areas for filtration, pouring concrete for new channels. Like the bustling city it serves, activity at the Werribee farm never ceases, and it's self-contained. The workforce of over 300 includes highly skilled artisans and professional personnel who maintain every aspect of the farm's operation in top-class working order. even treats its own fencing timber and workers construct its own fences to date more than 2,000 kilometers of them. The start of the Werribee farm project turning the first sod in 1892. Five years later well and truly in operation it was officially opened. The farm's success now world-renowned reflects the suitability of its site. Ample area, reasonably close to the city, low rainfall and high evaporation. Early mechanisation lacked the streamlined efficiency of today's equipment, but in all stages of the farm's history, the horse has played an important role in its development. Even today, sturdy stock horses are an indispensable part of the operation of this $14 million enterprise. The farm breeds its own for mustering livestock. This stockman and his horse are reminiscent of Australia's outback, yet they're only a few kilometres from a city of almost three million people.
One of the most practical and profitable methods of treatment at the Werribee farm is land filtration during late spring, summer and autumn. Raw sewage is irrigated from ground level channels across graded pasture areas controlled by check banks. As the sewage filters through the soil, it's purified by the action of soil bacteria and collected in deep open drains. This system, covering 4,000 hectares, can only be used when the soil is relatively dry and evaporation rates high. Vegetation is kept short by grazing animals. Wastewater is applied 100 millimetres deep every 18 to 21 days. Finely divided suspended matter is retained in the soil where bacteria convert it to humus and plant food. A third of the water, as clear liquid, percolates into the drainage system for discharge into the bay. The balance evaporates or is lost through transpiration. Land filtration accounts for 25% of the wastewater treated by the Werribee farm. And here's the payoff. The land treatment system filters nutrients from the sewage and enriches the soil, stimulating the growth of lush pastures. In turn, these have to be close cropped before the next irrigation. What better way to do it than with livestock? Not only are they very efficient mowers, they convert grass into profit. Efficient husbandry and management ensure livestock are kept healthy. The farm has two cattle herds, Angus and Herefords, totalling around 15,000 head. Each year, approximately 7,000 calves are bred on the property as replacement breeders or sold to the meat market. The quality of the herd is maintained by selecting breeding stock of proven performance. planned and constructed facilities, cattle are handled with maximum speed and care. These animals are ready for market and are being branded, weighed and loaded for transport by road to the Melbourne sale yards. There are some of more than 7,000 heads sold there every year from the Werribee farm to provide over 1,500 tonnes of prime dressed beef. The farm's livestock return well over a net half million dollars annually, contributing 30% of the operational costs. Metropolitan farm cattle under the hammer, well known to all members of the buying trade as top quality stock. Sheep, mainly crossbred withers, are purchased seasonally to assist with the mowing of pastures. 
They are fattened in the process and sold as contributors to the economic treatment of the city's waste. winter months when temperatures drop, pasture growth is retarded and evaporation reduced, it's no longer possible to employ land filtration. The alternative is grass filtration. Sewage, previously settled in sedimentation tanks, is slowly and continuously flowed over graded bays carrying a thick growth of mixed grasses. These support bacteria and other microorganisms which filter out organic matter and oxidize it. The resulting liquid reaches the outlet drains at the required standard of purity. Sedimented sewage is carried by narrow concrete channels and enters the grass bays through restricted inlets to ensure a steady flow. The grass functions as a horizontal trickling filter, gradually purifying the liquid. About 1,500 hectares of the farm are used for grass filtration. During warm weather, the bays are dried off and grazed until midsummer, then irrigated to promote growth for the following winter. The purified effluent, grass filtered, flows into outlet drains to the sea. Quality control at every step. Sampling and analysis, regulation and coordination of a complex enterprise serving well the disposal needs of the city of Melbourne. Since before the start of the century, the Werribee farm has been Melbourne's main sewage processing plant, but it's being supplemented by the southeastern purification plant at Carrum. Serving the eastern and southern suburbs, the Carrum plant will relieve Werribee until additional processing plant can be built. It's anticipated that a new interceptor sewer will have to be constructed from the northern areas of Melbourne to Werribee and a modern treatment plant built to supplement the farm's treatment capacity. This plant will produce a highly purified effluent from a more concentrated sewage load. As a prelude to meeting the growing needs of the future, a pilot plant has been established to determine the most efficient form of purification plant to be built and operated in conjunction with the farm. Treatment methods being studied include the use of either pure oxygen or air in the treatment process. An interesting and unusual aspect of the studies is the harvesting of algae, a part of the treatment in the lagooning process, and the investigation of its value as stock feed fed out on edible paper. The birds of Lake Borry, in their quiet domain with Port Phillip Bay as a backdrop, are unaware that about them man is at work in harmony with nature.